Good morning everyone. Kamusta kayo? Uh, today medyo mahaba-haba yung i-discuss natin kasi this is regarding uh, creating a proposal letter, yung mga uh, cover letter na ginagawa ninyo when you apply for a job in a particular freelancer platform like Upwork or Fi. I just don't know with others kasi kung meron kailangan ng proposal like in Fiverr and uh, online jobs, PH or other um, platform. But for Upwork, kailangan na kailangan nito. But then again, it uh, matters pa din na malaman nyo talaga on how to create a proposal letter uh, so that maging confident din kayo in um, stating or maging confident kayo in um, introducing yourself to a particular client. So, um, kaya yung title ng ating course now is Anatomy of a Killer Proposal Letter. Bakit ba ito yung course natin? Kasi these days, we have to accept the fact na dumami yung mga virtual professionals looking for a job or looking for jobs like us. So, magkakatalo na lang yan on how we introduce ourselves to the, ourselves to the clients or on how we um, uh, on how we inform them kung ano yung mga skills na ino-offer natin. But most of the time, sa proposal letter pa lang, makikita na maasasan ni client kung anong klaseng virtual professional tayo. Kaya it matters or importante na doon pa lang sa proposal letter, eh, makoconvince na natin sila. Um, nag-try akong mag-check nung aking mga, kasi ako, I, I still work. I still work, nag, uh, uh, nag-bibid pa rin ako ng mga jobs sa Upwork. And then, tinry ko, tinry ko yung records ko. Tinignan ko, out of the is out of the number of proposals na sinend ko, ilan doon yung may mga client na pumansin or ilan doon yung may mga client na nag-reply sa akin. Would you believe? Uh, kasi uh, ano ah, uh, ako ay matagal na, de ba? I am already um, ten years in the business, so or nine years in the business. Would you believe that only ten percent of my proposals ang may replies from the client? There are a lot of reasons from that. Maraming maraming reasons. One is yun nga, mataas yung competition. Pangalawa, uh, there are there are clients din naman kasi na ano eh, na matagal din talaga sila mag-reply. Minsan may mga umaabot ng one month bago sila mag-reply. Pero makikita nyo naman kasi af- kapag minonitor nyo yung mga pinadala ninyong proposal, makikita nyo naman kung na-close na or may na-hire na or na-archive na yung mga jobs na yon. Then, pangatlo is ito nga, yung hindi sila convinced on the proposal letter that you are sending them. That's why ito yung magiging focus natin ngayon on how to create a killer proposal letter. So, a killer siya meaning talagang mako-convince nyo si client na, ah, this is the one. This is the one that I'm looking for. Right? So, medyo mahaba-haba ito kasi I have 10 tips instead of 5 tips only. And then at the end of the course, I will show you a sample of a proposal letter that I created na nag-click naman kasi I was hired after I sent that proposal letter. Okay? So, let's begin. These are the tips. Number one is focus on the project and what the client wants. What do I mean by this? Kalimitan kasing pagkakamali ng mga virtual professionals is they tell too much about themselves. Alam mo yung pag maglalagay sila ng, uh, gagawa sila ng proposal letter, ang dami nilang nasabi about sa ginagawa nila, about sa sarili nila, nakakalimutan nila na di ba sa isang platform, you've already created a profile. At doon sa profile na yun, nakalagay lahat. Nandun lahat kung um, how you do your job or how you work, andun yung mga past or previous experiences mo. It's a resume, di ba? So, there's no need for you to create another resume in your uh, proposal letter. Kaya dapat you focus on the project and what the client wants. So for example, you are applying for uh, you are applying to be a social media assistant or a social media strategist. Maraming social media platform, diba? May Facebook, may Instagram, may Twitter, may Pinterest. So 
check mo na ano ba yung required ni client. Kung Instagram lang yan, focus on the Instagram and ano yung expertise mo sa Instagram. Okay, so do not uh, do not uh, dwell too much on other um, other social media platform kung hindi naman yun hinihingi ni client. And sabi din dito, focus on what the client wants. So, ano lang ba yung inindicate ni client doon sa uh, doon sa project description? Dapat you also echo that. Meaning, um, doon pa lang sa proposal letter mo, ini-indicate mo na na nakafocus ka. Mararamdaman ni client na nakafocus ka doon sa particular um, requirement niya. So, wag ka na masyadong magsab- magsabi or magkwento about yourself or about your um, other skills na hindi naman kailangan ni client. Kasi, mapipiece off lang yan or mabobore lang yan or maiinis lang yan. Dahil, you, you, you talk too much, kumbaga, di ba? Yun ang pwede niyang maging, yun ang pwede niyang maging impression sa'yo. Next, first two lines matters. Parang mali yung, ano ko dyan, first two lines matter. Walang S, ah. Sorry, mali yung grammar ko. So, first two lines matter. Okay. Uh, sa isang proposal letter, pwede ka namang, meron, usually meron na mga word limit yan, eh, or character limit. Uh, let's say, in a pork, uh, may particular limit lang yan. Pero, hindi ko naman, hindi naman, hindi ko naman na-reach yun unless talagang very detailed yung gusto ni client na ilagay ko dun sa proposal letter based on the instructions given on the job description. But, again, but then again, the first two lines matter. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, dapat yung first two lines ng proposal mo, nasabi mo na yung dapat mong masabi at nahit mo na yung gustong makita ni client. Uh, dapat sa first sentence pa lang, in just one sentence, dapat mapakilala mo na yung sarili mo, masabi mo na yung coining skills mo, masabi mo na yung expertise mo. And then on the second sentence, mabanggit mo na what you can offer. Ganon siya dapat ka-precise or ganon siya dapat ka-concise. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng gumawa ng nobela. Again, mabobore yung client mo, ma, um, ma, what they call this, ma, mapipiece off lang siya. Um, uh, pa, i-scrap ka lang yung iyong proposal kung masyado kang nag, nag-nobela doon o nagkwento ng biography mo. ba? So, dapat sa first two lines pa lang, makita na niya kung anong klaseng virtual professional ka. Okay, mamaya makikita niyo yung ibig sabihin ko dito pag pinakita ko yung sample proposal na uh, later papakita ko. Next, follow instructions and echo the requirement in the project description. When you say follow instructions, ibig sabihin, ito nabanggit ko na from previous video, you have to read the whole project description. Kasi may mga clients na at the end of the job description, nilalagay nila, naglalagay sila doon ng mga secret words or keywords that you have to type at the beginning or you have to include at the beginning of your proposal. Like ako, madalas akong maka-encounter yan kasi uh, I'm a content writer so medyo mahaba-haba ang mga job description na binabasa ko lalo na kapag nagbibigay na ng instruction si client doon. Tapos at the end of the, yung mga last sentence sila lagay nila, please write I understand at the beginning of your uh, proposal or at the beginning of your cover letter for me to know that you've read everything. So may mga ganun silang klaseng instructions. Ito yung kadalasang namimiss ng mga virtual professionals when they uh, apply or when they submit a proposal letter. Kaya dun pa lang, X na ni scrap na ng client yung kanilang mga proposals. Next is echo the requirement, di ba? When I say echo the requirement, kung ang requirement niya is, uh, I want you to manage my email. Ganon, di ba? Let's say, sabi ni client, you're applying as a virtual assistant and ang requirement ni client is, manage mo yung kanyang email. So, pwede mong ilagay doon na, I've read in the project I've read in the project description that you want someone to manage your email something like that ibig sabihin ni echo mo it's also a way of you telling the client that you understand what the requirement is all about at uh, mas pinaparamdam mo sa client na you're here to help kasi naintindihan mo na echo mo hindi lang yung naglalagay ka doon ng 
uh, I'm a virtual assistant and I can do the requirement or I can do whatever you want. Hindi ganun eh. Masyadong vague yun. So, you have to be specific by echoing what the requirement is all about. So, kung ano yung nilagay niyang requirement, mas maganda ilagay mo din dun. Isulat mo din or itype mo din. Next is set your expectations about you and your skills. So, uh, maganda din, di ba, sabi ko nga, first two lines matter. So, pero that doesn't end there. Kung meron pa namang opportunity for you to write doon sa ma- ng, ng mahaba-haba pa yung pwede mong um, i-type, um, ilagay mo doon on how you how you work ilagay mo doon yung, yung maganding discipline na sinusunod mo sa pagtatrabaho, yung schedule mo sa pagtatrabaho, it matters. Pwedeng hindi na kasi basahin, kasi let's say, ang isang project, maraming applicants. So usually, ini-scan lang yan ng clients and then yung first two lines lang ang binabasa nila. Pero, sa first two lines, pwedeng i-short, uh, anong tawag mo doon, naka-shortlist ka na. So, for example, there are 20 proposals, tapos na shortlist ka, so mag, mag-shortlist siya ng 5 proposals dyan, isa ka doon. So, babasahin niya ulit, babalikan niya yung proposals mo. At maybe yun na yung time na babasahin niya lahat ng sinulat mo doon. Mas maganda, nakalagay doon kung ako, whenever I propose, whenever I create a cover letter or a proposal, nilalagay ko doon first ano yung sinusunod kong disiplina sa pagkatrabaho. Let's say, uh, one discipline that I use is I am very uh, keen to details. Like, I, I I check my accuracy, I check my quality. Yan, in-state ko talaga doon. Next is I indicate yung work, uh, what days uh, ako nagtatrabaho and what hours. Kasi importante yon para doon pa lang sa proposal letter, malalaman na ni client kung fit kayo. Uh, and at the same time, ikaw din, you are also, di ba, you are also not really um compromising yung iyong uh, work habit di ba na mention ko din to the previous jobs that dapat doon sa time management mo naka-indicate doon kung ilang oras ka lang magtatrabaho kung anong araw ka lang magtatrabaho at kung anong oras sa uh, isang araw ka magtatrabaho hindi yung 24 hours parang pinapakita mo sa client ta available ka you have to set their expectations but pwede mo rin namang kung halimbawang uh, tansyahit mo din kasi kung ang client mo is nasa kabilang uh, side of the earth, meaning for example from US yan or from UK na iba sa time zone natin, um, pwede mo sigurong i-adjust yung iyong um, time o yung availability time, di ba? Pwede mo i-adjust yun based on their time zone. Di ba? Basta itansyahin mo siya. Ang importante, nilagay mo dun para makita ni client na ah, this is a fit kasi yung work principle niya, yung work schedule niya is uh, pwede naman dito sa requirement ko. So, at least nakalagay siya doon. Naka-indicate. At hindi na magtatanong si client, uh, hindi na siya whenever kasi, na, hindi na siya magre-reply or magtatanong si client, are you available in this time zone? Are you available on these days? So, at least nandun na lahat. Naintindihan na kagad ni client. That's one way of setting expectations. Uh, also, the work principle, when I say work principle, pag sinabi mong, uh, like ako, I'm a content writer. And I do not, to be honest, I do not write, I don't want to write anything about um, parang yung mga vulgar content or anything about sexuality or politics. Sometimes I do not like that. So sinasabi ko doon. Anyway, makikita naman sa job description yun eh. Kapag doon yung mismong job description pa lang hindi hindi na swak to my work discipline or to my work principle, I do not apply or I do not bid on that project. Okay? Next is check your spelling and grammar. Ayan, katulad ko, nagkamali ako kanina, di ba? Instead na uh, first two lines matter, ang na-type ko first two lines matters. So, mali na yun. That's why you have to check your spelling and grammar. Isang way din yan ni client ng uh, pagtingin kung ikaw ay uh, uh, skilled enough, hindi lang ito para sa mga content writers, uh, for everybody. Like, virtual assistant ka na nag apply na mag-manage ng email ng isang client. Of course, this matters. Itong spelling sa ka, ito, this matter, this to matter. Kasi yung spelling sa ka-grammar, um, 
kung magko-compose ka ng email eh, hindi naman pwedeng kung ano-ano lang yung English mo doon, yung English level mo doon. There's also there's a way for you to check your spelling and grammar. Pwede kang mag-download or pwede mong gamitin yung grammarly.com. Just create an account sa grammarly.com kasi may free account naman sila. Meron silang premium account, may free account. Yung free account is already enough for you to check yung spelling and grammar mo. Ang gagawin ni Grammarly.com, siya na mismo yung magko-correct ng iyong spelling and yung grammar. Uh, pag may nakita siyang something off, nagpo-propose si Grammarly ng you could uh, edit it this way or pwede mo siyang i-modify. But still, it's up to you to decide. Si Grammarly, mag, mag uh, ano lang siya, mag re-recommend lang siya ng better uh, better version or ng better way for you to write your um, to write your content. So, download na kayo nun or gumawa na kayo ng uh, account niya sa Grammarly.com para mas ma-check niyo yung spelling and grammar. It's just a free account. Okay? Next is be assertive. Ask client how you can be of help. When you say be assertive, hindi siya magiging pushy in the sense na parang sinasabi mo sa client pa, you hire me. Or else, parang ganun. Ikaw pa nagbigay ng ultimatum, di ba? When I say be assertive is, you let the client feel na ikaw yung hinahanap niya. So, ask the client how you can be of help. Like, lagay mo doon. Would you like me to help you on this project? Pwede mong ilagay nyo doon. Kasi, when you, ako, ginagawa ko lagi yun. Sinas, sinasabi ko yun or ini, ini-include ko sa proposal ko yun. Dahil, para maramdaman ni client that I am a skill, I am skilled, I am a master of my craft, and I am I can help you with your requirement. That's why meron ako doon lagi, would you like me to help you on this? Diba? Parang ganun, would you like me to assist you on this? Tinatanong mo siya, pero, pero uh, kinocondition mo yung mind niya na you are someone na makakatulong sa kanya. That's the way to be assertive. Hindi ito yung parang magmamakaawa ka na i-hire ka or parang bibigyan mo siya ng uh, ultimatum na i-hire ka no. Being assertive is sa, dito sa aspeto na to means you are let you let the client or you are um, you are uh, uh, parang ini kino, you are conditioning the client's mind that you are the one for that project. Okay. Next is invite client for a voice or video call. Uh, nilagay ko dito one in the port kasi hindi pa rin ako nakakagawa ng um, ibang uh, uh, account sa ibang platform. But, nilagay ko lang siya. At ito rin, hindi ko pa rin kasi ito nagagawa. Pero lately lang, na, dis- na pag-desisyonan ko na whenever yung mga susunod kong bidding o sa susunod kong application, mag a uh, uh, maglalagay ako nito. Meaning, um, Usually kasi kapag, uh, di ba sa proposal letter, sa ang huli natin, thank you, God bless, or kaya, uh, I hope that you will catch, uh, catch on me, or I hope you will reply to this proposal. Pero hindi, mas maganda, invite client for a voice and video call. Pwedeng, would you like me to, would you like to, me to set up a call, or um, a voice call or a video call for, for us to discuss the project? Di ba, parang, di ba na-mention ko sa, ano, sa, sa isang, nag-post ako dun sa ating, Facebook page na uh, freelancing is not just a work from home job. It is a business where you market your own skill. So when you do this, invite client for a voice or video call. Para ka ng isang business owner talking to another business owner. So business to business na o B2B na siya. So parang mas iba yung level nun, di ba? Saka dito pinapakita yung confidence mo that you can carry yourself well. Kasi ready ka to do a voice or video call. Uh, the other day, I think that was anong araw ngayon? Saturday ngayon? So, Saturday, Friday. I think that was Thursday. I had a one-hour video call with a client. She's from Australia. She owns a uh, company or a business na nag, ang kanyang product is our reusable straw. So, we talked about the business. We talked about uh, yung um what can I, what I can offer kasi ako I was uh, uh, she hired me as a social media assistant eh, to manage yung kanilang Instagram account so ayun we talked about 
we talked for almost an hour, mat- matagal-tagal din, although medyo nahihirapan ako sa pag-intindi. <laughs> Kasi nga, she's an Australian, so alam natin pag Australian, iba yung kanilang twang or iba yung kanilang diction ng English. Unlike uh, an American English, medyo madali siya, pero sa Australian, kasi may pagka-British English sila. So, let's say, sila yung mga 091, I, I, mga ganon, good day, ganyan. So, medyo mahira, pero um, the project went on. I was hired yesterday. I already received yung, um, uh, yung, kanyang, yung first task. So, nakapag-deliver na ako. So, dahil doon, pinakita ko kasi na confident ako for a voice voice call or video call. Next, always attach samples unless client indicated not to. Uh, siguro naman lahat ng platforms, uh, I just, again, I just don't know with the others, but in a port, there is a, uh, there, uh, allowed, allowed to attach samples. Kung ikaw ay nagsisimula pa lang at wala ka pang uh, job, naging job, I, I, I encourage you to do your samples. If you are a content writer, do an article para sa sampling mo. If you are a virtual assistant, I suggest that you create a, um, um, uh, for example, managing emails. So, create a video, like yung mag, mag-video mo yung how you create email. How you, pwede naman yun eh. May mga, pla, may mga tools or software online na pwede mong gamitin para ma-record yung screen mo. So, i-record mo yung screen mo and, i- i- tatay- and ipapakita mo doon how you create an email or how you uh, send an email, reply to an email, forward an email, mga ganon. Then, that video can be your sample. If you are a data entry specialist, di ba meron tayong data entry course, may yung ginawa ninyong typing speed at saka yung mga samples doon, kung ginawa nyo siya, pwede yung maging samples. And you can also create a video for that. Yung parang ilalagay mo kung gano'ng kakabilis, i-video mo gano'ng kakabilis mag-type, or kaya i-video mo kung gano'ng kaka-accurate mag, uh, mag- ent- mag-data entry, something like that. So, hindi dapat naging, uh, hindi dapat maging parang hindrance yung wala ka pang experience sa pag attach ng samples. Do samples. So whatever it is, do a sample. If you want, you can ask me if ano if um you want me to assist you on doing samples. Kasi marami tayong pwedeng pagkuhaan niyan or marami tayong pwedeng gawin para makagawa kayo ng samples if first time niyo pa lang mag-apply and uh wala pa kayong naging experience before. Okay? Then Next is create a two-minute video about your skills and offers and attach to the proposal. Ito rin hindi ko pa to ginagawa pero yung mga future application ko gagawin to. Gagawin ko na to. Um, so dapat confident ka na in recording yourself and uh, two minutes lang naman. So two minute video like ito parang ini-introduce mo yung sarili mo, sinasabi mo yung skills mo, yung work principle mo, yung work schedule parang may kakaibang touch naman yung proposal na instead of like, ang mangyayari dyan, um, pa, pa, parang maikli lang yung magiging proposal letter mo and then sasabihan mo si client na please see attached video of myself para at least, alam mo yun, nakilala ka na ni client, pakita ka na ni client and uh, ma, ma, maramdaman na niya how sincere you are, how skilled you are, how expert you are in that field. Uh, at maganda dito, pwede mo siyang gawing template na. So whenever you create a proposal, whenever you apply or create a cover letter, pwede mo siyang i-attach, siyang i-attach, di ba? Dapat din, pag nag-video ka, make sure na um, okay yung uh, okay yung suot mo, di ba? So, corporate, so medyo magbihis ka lang doon, and then uh, create a good background and uh, also yung, yung, yung noise, medyo i-manage mo so that maging professional yung dating ng video mo na yan. Marami namang ways, uh, maraming tips and video sa YouTube na magbibigay sa inyo ng idea on how to create a professional two-minute video about your, yourself. Okay? Then, offer free samples or free trial service. Okay. Uh, again, di ba, 
um, tayo kapag ka may binibili tayo or may nag-offer sa atin, di ba, merong free taste, di ba, free samples, free trial. So, ganun din dapat dito. Um, ako, whenever I bid for a job, lagi kong sinasabi na if you want to try my service, I will offer an article of 250 words for free. Ganyan. Uh, kapag naman ang bidding ko is, uh, oh, ikaw, kung magbibid ka as a virtual assistant, pwede mong sabihin na I can offer you free service for one hour or for 30 minutes uh, for just for you to test my skill. Pwede ganun siya. At least pagka nilagay mo yun na nag-offer ka ng free samples or free trial service, mafe-feel ni client na confident ka na alam mo yung ginagawa mo kasi may ibang virtual professionals na ayaw nila yan. Kasi nga medyo off or natatakot sila or kinakabahan pa sila kasi hindi pa sila confident sa skills nila. So, dapat talaga, kung talagang confident ka na, hindi ka matatakot na magbigay ng free samples or free trial service. But, then again, there should be a limit. Meron namang clients na taking advantage of the free samples or free trial service that you are offering. Na parang ang, ang nangyari, pinagawa na nila yung buong task sa'yo dapat nililimitahan mo lang. If you are offering free samples, uh, let's say, as a content writer, dapat limited lang yung words. If you're offering your uh, free trial service, dapat hindi isang buong araw or kalahating araw, siguro the maximum would be one hour. One hour. Pero kung ako yung mga 30 minutes, okay na. Depende kasi kung ano yung requirement nila. You assess. Kung alam mo, sa, sa tingin mo, sa 30 minutes, eh, makukuha niya na yung gusto niyang, I mean, makikita niya na kung gano'ng kakagaling or ka-skilled on that particular job requirement, then 30 minutes is enough. Basta lilimitahan mo lang, not to the point na naaabusa ka na. Okay? So, I think that's it. Yung 10, hindi ko na may isa-isa ulit. I just hope that you will, kung kalimutan nyo man, i-review nyo na lang yung video. But ito, I just want to end with this. I'm showing you right now sa screen yung isang uh, proposal letter that I did to a client wherein ang project na to is to write e-books, to write an e-book for, for the client about good habits. So I started with, hi there, my name is Chela, assistant writer from the Philippines. My expertise is on writing e-books. So then, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, di ba? Na um, two lines pa lang, actually one line nga lang yan eh nasabi ko na yung gusto kong sabihin. Alam na niya na ako ay isang seasoned writer, matagal na na writer, and then alam niya na ang expertise ko ay e-books. Then, sa second para, nilagay ko doon, I understand you need someone to work with you on an e-book regarding good habits. So, ito yung sinabi ko kanina that need to echo what the requirement is all about. Kasi para maintindihan niya, na na para malaman niya na intindihan mo din. Would you like me to help you? Again, this is being assertive. Diba? Parang I'm, ask, I'm, I'm, I'm letting the client feel na I am the right person for this kasi I could help you on this kind of project. Tapos sabi ko dito, you probably have gobs of ideas in mind. Then we can work together and transform them into an e-book. So parang ito, uh, medyo binabola-bola ko na si client or kinocondition ko yung mind ni client. Diba? Sabi ko, you probably have gobs of ideas in mind. Marami siyang ideas. Then we could partner, sabi ko doon, parang let's partner para uh, yung ideas niya matransform into an e-book. Tapos sabi ko, it's also good to note that you're more on the quality than speed. I love working with clients like that. So, ito, pinapakita ko sa kanya yung work discipline ko. That I love quality more than, uh, I love quality more than the speed. Kasi may mga client na gusto ka agad masubmit mo, matapos mo, eh di compromise mo yung quality. That's why ito pinapakita ko na sa kanya. Nagpareho kami. Kasi in-indicate sa job description yun. Eh. Na parang sinabi niya sa job description na parang timeline or uh, hindi siya nagmamadali. Parang ganun yung sinabi. Tapos I invite you to check the attached samples. So I attach the samples of my work and have a glimpse of my profile to see client's feedback. So ito, ligay ko dito, nag-attach ako ng samples even if hindi siya naghihingi. And then, invite ko siya doon to check on my uh, Upwork profile para makita niya yung mga positive feedback from clients. And then, at the end, sabi ko, I'd love to hear more about what would make this project a success for you and explore if we'd be a good fit to work together. 
is it okay to have a chat or call via Upwork to discuss? So yan, invite ko na siya na magkaroon kami ng call or chat sa Upwork. And I think, um, yan, nag-end na dyan. And I think this is, naging effective naman to. Kasi, I, uh, after after a day, kinabukasan, nag-usap na kami dun, I was hired. So, pwede nyo rin gamitin ito as a platform, or I mean, as a pattern, just change some of the words. And, um, again, these are just words, eh. Ang importante, whatever you indicate in your proposal, kaya mong i- kaya mong i-deliver sa client at kaya mong talagang and your uh, totoo yung sinasabi mo. Yun. At those are, those matter talaga. Para mas maging effective yung iyong proposal mo. Okay, VP Campers, I hope na again, may natutunan na naman kayo dito sa ating mini course. Hindi ko alam kung gano'ng ang tinagal nito but I, I hope na ma-inspire kayo in creating a killer proposal letter because that matters. And uh, iyon kasi ang iyong, parang iyon ang inyong uh, the way ng pagpapakilala nyo sa isang client. Kaya dapat make sure na matatandaan kayo ng client, make sure na makukonvince nyo si client at makukondition nyo yung mind niya na ikaw ang the right person for that job. Uh, for that job. Okay? If let me know lang if you have questions or if you want an assistance on how to create a profile or a, I mean a cover letter, just PM me and I will help you. By the way, for those who are new to this video, I I am inviting you to um uh to join our group, Virtual Professional Camp. It's a Facebook group where in nandun lahat yung mga ino offer kung uh, free courses about freelancing. And then like our page, the Chela Kagins Virtual Professional Academy to get updates, to get some inspiration kasi nagpo-forward ako din ng mga quotes regarding freelancing. And also, I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube, uh, YouTube channel para mas marami pa kayong mapanood na video on me sharing about the hustles of uh, freelancing or of uh, being a virtual professional. All right. Till next video, VP Campers, thank you and have a nice day or have a nice weekend. Bye!